Let's get right to it. Uh, Romans 12. Guys, go ahead and find Romans 12. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Romans 12. This is going to be a popular verse, or a popular chapter, a popular verse. Go to verse number 2. That's where we're going to be preaching from tonight. And my girlfriend and I were watching TV a couple of days ago, and the guy got on there, and he said, Honey, I'm a man of few words. She said, You're not. So I'll try to do this. I'm going to do my best here. We're just going to do one verse tonight. Romans 12, verse 2. And it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is the will of God, which is good and acceptable and perfect. Or yours might say the perfect will of God, good, acceptable, perfect. Amen. Amen. All right. Got to pray here. Lord, Father, use me. I give myself away. Touch me and anoint me. Let your word flow through me. We got all these cameras set up, not so my name will be heralded around the world, but so that your name. It's all for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I heard a story about a police cadet who had just finished training at the academy. He just finished. He got through all the endurance tests and all the different tests, and he got to his final test. It was a written test, just four questions. Now, the first three were very easy. The last one, a little bit longer. It was a written one, and it said, you were, just, you were the first to arrive on the scene where a gas main is blown. There you find the explosion has tipped over a car. Inside you see two people, obviously on a date and they've probably been drinking. The smell of alcohol is very apparent. Now both of them are unconscious. Now you notice the woman is the police commissioner's wife. The man is not the police commissioner. You also notice that somebody during the explosion had got blown into the river. He's help, screaming, help me, help me, save me, I can't swim. Right at that moment, a man runs out from a nearby house, says, you've got to help me. My wife just went into labor. The question on the test was, please explain in a few words what you would do. Well, the cadet thought about it, and he said, you know what? I'm going to change out of my uniform and blend in with everybody else. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Too often we all change. We all conform. We all change our appearance or change what we do to conform with everything else. In the police officer's case, he couldn't accept or couldn't handle the responsibility of the task in front of him. As believers, we all have a responsibility. But a lot of times we just conform and go along with the world. So what we're going to talk about is Romans 12, just that one verse. Paul's talking to the Romans here, and he gives some great instructions. Everybody got it? Romans 12. Anybody don't have it? Say, wait. Anybody? Everybody's got it. All right. We're going to go right through this. I'm going to read it again. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It says, be not conformed. Now, a lot of this you probably know. Not conformed assumes, it, it refers to an assumption of an outward appearance, an outward expression. It's on the outside, what's not on the inside. It's kind of a masquerade or an act. The word form implies that Paul's readers were already allowing this to happen, and they needed to stop. It says, be not conformed to this world. Now, that's what we're going to talk about right now. This world, probably better translated as this age. The age refers to the system of beliefs, the values, or the spirit of the age, meaning any current issue in the world. There's some contemporary thinking and values that forms the moral atmosphere of our world. And guess what? This world is always dominated by Satan, it seems like. Yes. It says, be not like this world. Now, this current world's mindset is expressed in the ideas, opinions, goals, hopes, views of the majority of people. It encompasses the world's philosophies, education, and commerce. And it's unfortunate, but we can often be easily influenced or persuaded to accept the opinions and views of others. For instance, psychologists over the years have done tests. Has anybody heard of the ASCH? I can't say it. A-S-C-H test. Anybody heard of this? It was done several times in the 50s, several times since then. The psychologists got a group of people, normally about 10 at a time. 
And they had two big cards, big card here, and on the card had three different size lines. A short one with an A, a medium one with a B, and a long one with a C. They would hold up another card with the medium size line. There was no letters on there. And they would ask the group of people, which line does that represent here, A, B, or C? Now, this is what they did. They had nine people in on it. Nine people were all supposed to give the same incorrect answer to see what the last person would do. Seriously, this is a test they did. So they went around the room. The medium line is obviously B. They held up the, the card with the medium sized line. They went around. This guy said C. This lady said C. This guy said C. This guy said C. We got all the way around the room to the last person. And you know what 75% of the people did? Went along with everybody else. 75% of everybody went along with the incorrect answer. Now, when they interviewed these people afterwards, they said, why did you go along with them? The answer was the same. Oh, I thought I heard the answer or question wrong. I, I wasn't sure. You know, everybody else was doing it. I didn't want to stand out. I didn't want to make a fool of myself by getting it wrong. Now, the people, the 25% that did choose the correct answer anyway went against the crowd. You know what we found out about those people? They didn't have any confidence in their answer. They had doubt. They weren't sure. Why'd you choose that answer? Well, I could be wrong, but it kind of looked like that should have been the answer. But I don't know. Maybe I didn't hear the question right because everybody went the other way. They didn't have any confidence. They had a lot of doubt. Now, you're saying, well, how does that apply to me? Well, let me give you a perfect example. How many of you guys have heard of the separation of church and state? Raise your hand if you've heard about that. Separation of church and state in the United States Constitution. Guess what? It doesn't exist. Did you know that? The separation of church and state is not in the United States Constitution. Of course it is. You hear the television reporters and the news reporters and everybody talking about this. Well, it's not there. Actually, it is. Separation of church and state does appear in the Constitution of the former Soviet Union. Seriously. Former Soviet Union, the church in the USSR is separated from the state and the school from the church, but it's not in the U.S. Constitution. It's not there. This is what they're talking about. First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or the freedom of press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That's the First Amendment. The First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States says Congress shall make no law represent, or respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. We've all been lied to. We've all been lied to unwittingly conform. We hear it all the time. It must be true. I mean, but look at the TV now. What do you see on TV everywhere? It's all misleading us, the, the youth and the generations. Oh, wait, what do you see on TV right now? You see, well, you see looks, you see popularity, you see image, you see money, you see sex. I mean, what happened to Little House on the Prairie? The people nowadays don't know who Michael Landon is. They don't know. They know who Snooky is, yeah. maybe Will and Grace, maybe the next teen mom. But nobody knows Michael Landon, these wholesome shows. Nobody knows that because on TV, there's image. Popularity, American idols, you know, popular people, and sex. That's what's on TV, and it's wrong. But the world expects it. The world expects it. As a matter of fact, if you stood against it, you'd probably feel like one of those people in the experiment that gave the right answer, but felt a little bit nervous about giving it because everybody else is against you. I mean, how many people think, do you feel that way when you're trying to stand up for Jesus sometimes and... They look at you like you've got a sore across your face or something like that. I mean, it's wrong. But remember, the devil comes to steal and kill, <laughs> kill to steal, steal and kill and destroy. And one of his weapons is lies. Satan is the father of lies. Not only that, he will attack, your, attack you with doubt attack you with insecurities, he'll attack you with fear because Satan wants you to feel awkward when you try to do what's right. He wants you to not stand up for your beliefs. He wants you to doubt and he wants you to be misled. He wants you to think, you know, 
that's probably not right, but, you know, I don't want to get laughed at. And besides, everybody else is doing it. Now, wait a second. You remember your parents saying that to you when you were a kid? I remember that. My mom, I'd say, but everybody else is doing it, Mom. And she'd say, well, if everybody else jumped off a bridge, would you follow them? And, of course, I would say, no, no, no. Well, then why are we trying so hard to follow that, the world off that bridge? Why are we doing that? Well, let's talk about the world for a little bit. I, you know, just to get this more clarity on this. The divorce rate in America is over 50%, right? Do you know what the divorce rate is in churches? Still 50%. Not looking good here. Do you know there's a murder in the U.S. every 22 minutes? There's a rape every five. There's a burglary every four. Excuse me. There's a burglary every 10 seconds. Somebody gets robbed at gunpoint, knife point, every 49 seconds. Maybe that's too big. I mean, that's the whole United States. In North Carolina, alone. A teen gets pregnant every 28 minutes. North Carolina alone. Someone commits suicide in the U.S. every 13 minutes, and this blew me away. Only one out of 25 attempts actually complete the job and commit suicide. That means for every one person of the 13 that commits suicide, how, how long is that? Every 13 minutes somebody commits suicide? 24 others try. This is terrible. Do you know that suicide is the second leading cause of death in teens 15 to 24? This is the world. This is the world. Let's get more. Let's get into this. We're, since we're talking about teens, in a recent study in Barna, they found that 63% of all teens do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. 58% believe that all faiths, all faiths, have something equally valid in them. 58% or 58 believe that all faiths have something equally valid in them. 51% do not believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And this one blew me away. 65% of all teens in the U.S. do not believe that Satan is real. They live in an age, a world where there's no consequences, no nothing. And you turn on the TV, and we kind of just don't talk about that. We talk about who's better looking, or who has the bigger car, or whose crib looks better, or whatever that is. This is the world we live in. And Paul says, do not be conformed to the world. So what do we do? Let's continue in verse 12. Or excuse me, in verse 12, yes. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Now stop there for a second. It says to be transformed. Now transformed comes from the Greek word metamorpho, where we get the English word metamorphis. All right? It means an outward change in appearance. Matthew used the same word to describe the transfiguration of Jesus in Matthew 17. Jesus, you know, as he briefly and in a limited way displayed his outwardly, his inner divine nature and glory at the transfiguration. Christians when we're transformed, should outwardly manifest our inner redeemed values. Not once, though, but daily, every single day. Just like a caterpillar becomes a butterfly through metamorphosis, we as Christians, too, should be going through a metamorphosis. We should. We should not still look like caterpillars. No. So how do we do this? Paul continues. Paul continues. He says, be ye transformed or changed, and let me point this out. This is something that you can't do yourselves. You can't do this yourself. We can't write out a list of, this is how you be a Christian. We, we can't write out a list of stuff that will make us more Christian-like. Be ye transformed is written in your Bible in such a way to reveal to us that it's a process that must be done to us, not by us. All right? So leave your finger there in Romans and, and turn over to 2 Corinthians 3.18, if you will, just for a second. 2 Corinthians 3.18. See, we have to continue to be changed. We, we can't ever get to a point where we say, I have been changed. Okay, you can't say that I have changed. Because if you say you've changed and you've got it all fixed, you're almost saying that you're perfect. 
But see, nobody's perfect except for Jesus. So you can't get to that point where you say, I have changed. So 2 Corinthians 3.18. I'm going to read from the King James right here. Actually, it might be New American Standard. We'll find out. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed or changed, King James says, into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. Paul's emphasis here is, is not so much on the mirror, not so much on the reflective capabilities of the mirror, rather more the intimacy of it. I mean, you can take a mirror and you can hold it right up to your face, can't you? Get a pretty good unobstructed view, right? Now, in Paul's time, they were polished metal, so it wasn't very unobstructed. But you can get a pretty good view if you hold a mirror up to your face. But even the mirrors today will not reflect the perfect representation of God's glory. Not now. Someday, though, it will. It says, you are being transformed or changed into the same image. In 2 Corinthians there. This is a progressive transformation. In other words, as they gaze at the glory of the Lord, believers are continually being transformed into Christ's likeness. Does that make sense? Because the ultimate goal of the believer is to be like Christ. As a believer, that is your ultimate goal. The ultimate goal you have is to be like Christ. And by continually focusing on Him in the Spirit, focusing on Him, the Spirit will transform you more and more. Does that make sense? We'll get into that a little bit more. Because it says from glory to glory. That's the next part of the verse there. It means from one level of glory to another level of glory. One level of manifesting Christ to another level. Meaning you're growing. It describes right here a progressive sanctification. In other words, the more a believer grows in their knowledge of Christ, the more he is revealed in their lives. Did you catch that? The more you know about Christ, the more you study, the more it will show. In a nutshell there. Well, go back to Romans here. Go back to Romans here. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed or changed by what? Renewing. Renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Renewing your mind. I mean, that's key. You've got to renew your mind. We've all got to renew our minds. You know, when I was putting this sermon together, I had the hardest time. I, I have to be honest with you. I had the hardest time. I, I told Phyllis in the back, I, I, I said, honey, I don't know what to talk about. I mean, I know what to talk about, but I, there's so much in just this verse. I mean, I could do a whole sermon on being not conformed to this world. I mean, I could do a whole sermon on just being transformed. I could go back one verse to Romans 12, 1, where he talks about presenting yourself in a holy and living sacrifice before the Lord. Or, you know, I could go the other way, too. I can go to verse 3. You know what it says there? To not think more highly of yourself. And to be sober and sober-minded. I mean, it's like I could do a whole series of sermons just on three verses. I'm serious. You probably have that hard time like that. It's, what do you talk about? There's so much just in these verses. But today, like every preacher, I'm going to give you some points. So we're going to focus on one little area. We're going to focus on renewing our minds. Because if you don't renew your mind, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be the same tomorrow as you were yesterday. And the same the day after that as you were today. And two weeks from now, and two years from now, and 20 years, the rest of your life, you will be the same. You've got to renew your mind. So I've got seven steps. I know that's a lot, but I've got seven steps we'll go through really quickly on how a good way, a good start to renew your mind. But for any of this to work, seriously, for any of this to work, we have to spend less time in the world and more time yeah. in the Word. All right, seven steps. If you're taking notes, number one is re-surrender. Re-surrender. Renewal begins by offering up your whole body, soul, mind, and spirit to the Lord. Luke 10, 27 tells us, And he answered, You shall love the Lord their God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your 
mind. That's right. And it takes a conscious effort to present oneself to the Lord. And you do that by disciplining yourself for godliness. Paul urges us to present ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice. So every day we are required to resurrender, resubmit, and realign our minds, wills, and emotions to the purposes of God. So here's an action step. I like giving action steps. I get to speak a lot and they say, what can I do? Here's an action step. Every single day, get in the Word. Take 15 minutes if, if you don't have much time. Pray. Meditate on the Word. Read the Word and sh let God show you how worthy He is and re-surrender yourself to Him every single day. Right. Number two, rejoice. Got to have rejoice. Philippians 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He wouldn't have said it twice if it wasn't important. Amen. All right. Amen. Nehemiah 8 states, do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. When we find our strength through the joy of the Lord, he will renew your desire to please him in all respects. And, and by delighting yourselves in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. We've all heard this before. But regardless of your circumstances, his joy tr is transcendent yeah. over all disappointments, all difficulties, and all discouragements. That means no matter what happens in your life, rejoice. Amen. God is with you. God will see you through it. Number three, if you're taking notes, reconsider. Reconsider. All the negative conditioning that has led you to, in the past and realize that you need to reprogram this thing. You need to reprogram your thinking to things that are excellent and good and honorable and true and worthy of praise. Because without an effort to look at your faulty assumptions and your faulty past decisions, we'll tend to operate under those same old destructive habits. How many of you guys will think differently when... Somebody says, oh, well, separation of church and state. I mean, I thought the same thing. I blew me away. I had to look it up 12 times. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. What? No, I've been saying that for years. I can't believe that. Number four, replace. Replace what is fleshly with what is God's word. Paul wrote in Ephesians, put away anger, jealousy, wrath, and slander, and put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Learn how to replace what is ever prompted by fleshly tendencies with spiritual controlled principles. This morning you probably talked, I heard, saw in the bulletin, you talked about the fruits of the Spirit. I'm going to talk about that. Get rid of all that negative stuff. Focus on love, yes. joy, peace, patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Did I miss them? Okay, I got them. <laughs> Replace those negative things. Replace those bad habits with good habits. Number five, realize. Realize that God's will in your life is better than what you got planned. I mean, I know you've got all kinds of plans. I have all kinds of plans. Many people think they can discover the best paths on their own. But you know what? God's will is better than all human ways. All human perspectives, all patterns of responses. God's way is the best. Right? And a full realization of God's will is only made possible through prayerful petitions that will allow the Spirit of God to work in and through us with His power. You know, I found that prayerful people are better able to see what God wants them to do. Yes. Better to see, be able to, able to see what He wants them to do in their relationships, yes. with their jobs, with their activities, with their whole lives. So go to the Lord in prayer. Realize that you need prayer. Number six, resist. Resist the conformity to the world. All right. Know that the greatest enemy to renewal is conformity to the world with its lust of the flesh, 
lust of the eyes, boastful pride of life. Resist to, this is important, resist trying to be strong enough on your own. You know, oh, I got this, no problem. I mean, just resist, resist the temptation. Oh, I have a problem drinking, you know what? I go to the bar, I'm not gonna drink, I'm strong, I've got willpower, you know, I, I can handle it. No, stay away from the bar. I mean, if your problem is women, stay away from women. I mean, it's just that, I mean, if, if you're on a diet, don't get a job at a bakery. I mean, it just doesn't make it, keep away from it. Just, you know, you don't have to be strong enough if you just avoid it. I mean, that's one thing you can do. Because the Bible says, resist the devil and he will. But don't forget the first part. Anybody know what it says right before that? It says, submit yourself, surrender yourself to God. Yes. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Don't forget the first part. It's not resist the devil on your own. It's surrender yourself to God, submit yourself to God, and then resist the devil, and then he'll flee. You can't forget the first part. So many times we try to do it on our own. We don't have to. We don't need that because number seven, and they all are R's here. Number seven is remember. Remember that with God all things are possible. Also remember that you don't have to do this alone because Jesus said, He's talking to the disciples, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you a helper, and he will be with you forever. What's the helper he's talking about? The Holy Spirit. That's right. We're not doing this alone. We have got the help of the creator of the whole universe with us. He created everything, and he's got your back. You don't have to do this alone. So in closing, and when a preacher says in closing, you know what that means, right? Nothing. I'm just kidding. All right. In closing, renewing your mind is not a one-time thing. A renewed mind is a mind that is saturated with and controlled by the Word of God. That kind of transformation can only occur as the Holy Spirit changes our thinking through consistent study and meditation of the Scripture. Now, and it's necessary because it, it's so necessary because the rest of Romans 12.2, we've got to finish the rest of the verse here, it says that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. That's how you prove it. Now, now I don't know where you are in your walk with Jesus. I, I don't know where you are in your spiritual walk. And I'm sure many of you have probably heard this same thing I've said over and over and over and over again. But how many of us are actually doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've heard renew my mind since I was a kid, but how many of us are actually making a conscious effort daily mm -hmm. to renew our minds? I mean, anybody taking an active part and you know what, I'm gonna renew my mind and I'm gonna do this 15 minutes, just 15 minutes, then 20, then 25. You'll find out that you just love spending an hour or more a day. I, I know I spend two or three hours watching or listening to sermons. I just can't get enough of it. I, you get to that point. And 10 years ago, I would change the channel. The more you get into it, the more you'll love it. The more it'll open doors. It's just amazing. But here's the problem, though. Most people are prone to procrastination. Procrastination is putting off today or putting off till tomorrow what should be done today. You know, and unfortunately, the number one thing that many people put off is their walk with the Lord. You know, I'll get to it sometime. I'll get around to it. I'll get it sometime later, tomorrow, next year. But while you're putting off what needs to be done, many of us are living a dry, defeated Christian life. And not only that, but Satan is doing everything he can to keep you conformed to this world. Absolutely. In every age, in every age throughout history, one of the greatest threats to God's people was the conformity to the age they lived in. I mean, that's our greatest threat too, conforming to this world. I mean, and what bothers me is the fact that we'll be satisfied not being worldly, just a step or two behind it. I mean, do you realize 
that what you readily do today would have been unthinkable just one generation ago. Unthinkable. Oh, I'm not that bad. Really? I'm not pointing. Every time you point, you're pointing back at you. We've all got to renew our minds. So let's take a closer look at ourselves this week. Let's get into the Word. Let's ask repeatedly, what does the Word say? 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 Oh my goodness, this happened. What does the Word say? Amen. Remember, the Holy Spirit is in you. He'll help you. Let's line ourselves up with the Word. Let's renew our minds so that we can even tell what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Until yeah. we get in this, we're not even going to know. Right. All right. Father, thank you so much for...